Hi, and welcome back to the C Sharp Beginner Tutorial Series for the Stride Game Engine. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to add components to entities through code. Now, in the previous tutorial, we've already learned how to add components to entities using the Stride Game Studio. We could cl simply click on Add Component and type in the name of our component, and then we would be done. But now, in this tutorial, we'll do everything through code. So as you can see, I've opened up the adding a component tutorial and I've selected the machine gun model. It already contains a script called adding a component demo. And in that script, we are going to add our code. In order for us to add a component to an entity, we need to create it. So let's create a new ammo component by saying ammo component one is new ammo component. And then all we have to do is say entity dot add, and then we pass in the ammo component that we've just created. And that's pretty much all there is to it. The ammo component is added to the entity and any code that is inside the ammo component will be executed or will be available. So that means in this case, any public properties or public methods can be accessed for this ammo component. Now, if we want to add multiple components of the same type to an entity, then that's perfectly possible. However, we do have to make sure that this is an actual new instance or new copy, if you will, of this ammo component. That means that if I would copy this line again, then we would get an exception because this ammo component, well, it's already been added to our current entity. So if you want to add a second ammo component to an entity, then all we have to do is basically copy this line, say this is ammo component two, and then add that at ammo component two as well. Now let's remove all the ammo components that we've added to the entity. As we've seen in the previous tutorial, we can do that by saying entity dot remove all, and then followed by either the type or the ammo component variables themselves. So we can say remove all of type ammo component and this will simply remove all the components that we've just added. Now let's add a little breakpoint here and build our code and run the game. Okay, so the game has been built. Let's go to the adding a component demo scene and now the breakpoint will trigger. So at this point, the remove all method has not been executed yet. And if we would hover over entity and we go to its components properties, notice how it has five different components. It has the transform component, which we get by default. It has a model component, which is the gun. That's the model that we have. Then we have the script that we're actually typing in right now, which is the adding a component demo script. And then we have the two ammo components that we've added in these two lines. Now, if we would go one line further in the code and we would hover over entity again, go to components, then notice how we now only have three components inside our entity. Both the ammo components are now gone. The last thing that we're going to learn is a very useful method that sort of combines creating and getting a component from an entity. So let's create ammo component three. And this time we're going to say entity dot get or create followed by the type of component that we want to add. Now what this does is it's going to check on the entity if it has this ammo component and if it doesn't have one, it's going to create one for us and then return that component to us. This can be very useful. So you don't always have to check if the entity has one. You can simply let this method take care of that. And if it already has one, it will simply return that component or the first component that it will find. Now do note that if you use this method, then there is a one tiny caveat that you have to take into account. 
at the moment that we, so in this particular line where the breakpoint is currently set, we've removed all the ammo components. So at the moment that we call this method here, the get or create method with the ammo component, it will create an ammo component for us. However, its startup script or its, uh, its initialization, if you will, of this ammo component will not be started until the next frame update. So if we would go to ammo component right now, then this particular start method would not be called until the next frame. So if we would have some sort of initialization in here, be sure that this would not happen right away. Either way, that concludes all the useful ways of adding components and an additional how to get a component from an entity.